Look at us on time this week, 10, 10 Eastern standard time. Rick Uchino, SP three, the wrestling legend himself, Dutch Mantel here on smack talk, getting ready to, uh, take a look and review and talk about everything that happened on this action packed episode of Friday night Smackdown tonight, Dutch, as yeah. you would say, this was a bit of a maintenance show tonight and a bit, a bit of one, you think? Th- this is uh this was definitely a maintenance show for the the undercard of WrestleMania. We had one match that was I believe it was officially added or at least a challenge was thrown down. Two others may be uh coming hopefully an announcement on SmackDown Lowdown or on Raw, but definitely the the stage has been set for two of those other matches. The six man ladder match is officially set. We will dive into all of that. Uh, make sure to get your comments in. Make sure to get your super chats in. That is the uh, the only way to guarantee your comment gets read on the air is if you send us a super chat. So hop in on that. Interact with us any way you can. Just just keep it nice. Keep it friendly. Constructive criticism is great, but let's let's keep the nastiness uh, to a minimum. Thank you all very very much. Dutch overall tonight. No Rock, no Roman, no Cody. Um, kind of puts a damper on what the the show was going to be. This ended up being the big setup and the debut of Jade Cargill. What do you think? What What did you think overall of what they did tonight? Well, Jade Cargill looked great. She looked good. And uh, Dakota Sky. Dakota I just Kai. Telling, I would, Dakota everybody, Kai. I was just telling Sid and Rick here. I hadn't paid a lot of attention to Dakota Sky because I think she Dakota was Kai. Hurt. Dakota Kai, Kai. Oh, Dakota Sky. No, Dakota Dak- Kai. That's what, I said. Kai. That's what I said, Dakota Sky. Okay, no, now Dakota just, Kai. Now, uh, now you're cares. just fucking with me. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. You see how easy these guys are. You say one little word off. Oh, God, we got to correct you. Dakota Kai. That is go. her name. EO you're Sky. Right. I did, I did call her Sky because they, there's another one named Sky, right? I get, I get them confused. Yeah, but I don't. I don't care. That girl's really good, really good, and she can hold her own with with all of them. And uh, Jay Cargill looked great, and they were parts of the show that just put me to sleep. That's what maintenance shows do. They just remind you of, hey, this is what we got coming up, but we don't, we can't give all of it away here on uh, on the on this TV show, but. Uh, it was a good maintenance show, I guess, but I almost went to sleep in the middle of it. So thank God yeah. for coffee to keep me awake. I've been chugging, I've been chugging, uh, chugging soda since about eight o'clock myself. SP3, what, what what are your overall thoughts? I, I, I can see the, uh, I, I can see your answer written all over your face right now. I'm just here so I don't get fined. All right, we will we'll talk about um now there was some there was some good <laughs> stuff on this show. There was Jay Cargill look great. They did a great introduction for her. her. Entrance was amazing. So yeah, that was that was the main thing that happened on the show. AJ Styles and LA Knight, I thought they had a good segment, but other than that, yeah, I could have I could have skipped this week. All right, well, let's start with Jade Cargill. Uh I just Jade Cargill walking into a room is impressive um putting the wwe production machine behind her um man you knew they were going to make her look like a star and that that like there's nothing there it's pitch black and then they got the snow going off behind it and that laser light effect that they did it looked like it looked like stargate was opening up or something like that man and she just she walks through her silhouette like just standing in front of that it almost looked like it was cgi at first like it just looked too and then the lights came on and there she was she was looking great she walked down to the ring dutch i i am curious to hear what you think of her uh her first promo um this i thought it was a little it was a little basic. She didn't say anything, you know, mind boggling. The storm has come. Nobody can, you know, nobody can touch me. The, the, love the ladies in the locker room. They're all great. They ain't me. What'd you think of her opening promo tonight? Well, it, it didn't blow me away. She said what she had to say. 
she come off a little bit like a like a hill, I think. But other than that, it, it was it, it was basic to the point, and she good introduction for her. Of course, the the, the big introduction, <clears throat> of course, like you said, is, is that uh, at the last there when she come out and I, I love her pose when she does this. That girl, mm -hmm. how tall is that girl? She's six, six foot? foot. Is she six foot? I think she is. Yeah, I think so. She might be six, six one. one. Six but one. She looks tall. Yeah. She is. Yeah, she's, uh, she's only five ten, actually. She's only five ten. She well, that, that's all me. well, well, well the, all she'll me. be built, she'll be billed at six feet that's and six, wrestling. Six foot one inches tall. Re we wrestling can. and NBA, you get the three inch tax. Oh yeah, you, you, you get that automatically. But uh, yeah, her introduction was good, and it accomplished what they wanted it to accomplish. It didn't it didn't blow anybody away, but it, they would they would hope it would do that. But it was just a basic interview, and she introduced herself, and no harm done. She, she advanced. That's all I can say. Yeah, I think the promo was clearly written for her SP3, and yeah, I can see where Dutch is saying it did come off a little bit heelish, but I I just think she's confident in in her abilities and she's ready to show that and then we saw that at the end where you have the main event it was bianca and naomi and they have decided to partner up together and take on damage control odds be damned bianca and dakota again as we already said we thought they had a really really good match bianca gets the win i don't know if damage control arrived late or if they were supposed to arrive late if they were supposed to end that match in a, in a dq it looked like there was a little bit of a Whatever. KOD, Dakota gets beat. What Bianca gets a win. It happens. It, Sometimes it did look like on. they were just a touch late. A touch late, yeah. And that even commentary is like, that counts as a win. That counts as a win. It's gonna be in the record book. That counts as a win. Like we know, Corey, we, we saw the three. But anyway, You're fine. um paint by numbers, what we've seen the last few weeks. Damage control gets the numbers game going, and then Jade's music hits. And this was the, the best part of the show for me. There was no emotion on her face. She was not in a hurry. It was just pure confidence. Slow walk down to the ring. She gets in there. Three moves. Her her pump kick, which looked great. The power bomb on Dakota looked like she killed her. And then Magic. and then she plants Kyrie. And then the best thing that would happen, and and Roland brings it up, looked like Cargill attempted to pin Kyrie Sane. I loved this. She did. I loved this because she rolled into it and then she, she had that little bit of an attitude where she like licked her fingers like this is just a taste of like, you know, I know this is over. I hit one move on her and it was if this was a match, it was over flawless victory. I thought Jade came off great in the uh, main event segment here. SP3. Yeah, she came off like a world beater when she came out at the end. And I think that WWE has booked her very well. As far as the promo, it came off ridiculously scripted. It felt it, it felt like she had a teleprompter behind the camera. That's yeah. how that's how scripted it sounded. That that was like probably my my biggest nitpick of the entire presentation of the night. I think the overall presentation of Jade there they've been booking her well and been putting her in the right spots. What Jade has is a A plus look. She has an A plus look, and she has unpolished charisma that can potentially become an A. And everything else is very much green. Everything else about her game is very much green. She's got the look. She's got a bit of charisma. We just have to work on everything else. The promos, the but rest that charisma, of the That charisma doesn't grab you right away, though. No. She has more of the it factor of it's the it's the look charisma. It's the it's the I, I describe it as when I think about look charisma, I think about Goldberg. Nobody would say Goldberg has talking charisma. No one would say Goldberg had character charisma, but when you looked at him, there was something about him that just made you gravitate to them, and that's what Jade has in a lot of ways. So I think that she has that type of kind of uncrafted, unmolded charisma, if you will, Dutch. I agree. Who, hey, who used the spear tonight? You remember? There was spear, spear used by somebody. I forgot now. And I was thinking automatically... 
Boy, Goldberg's mad. I don't know. Goldberg. I, I wish I wish Asuka would. I hope I hope <laughs> Asuka hits a spear in her next match. Like, uh, yeah, that's what she needs to do. Yeah, boom, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Frantic World saying, uh, I saw uh, what Jade Cargill did on Twitter. I still need to know why WWE waited so long to use Jade in in TV and. Came down to what SP3 just said. She's still very green in a yeah, lot of her yeah. game, and Triple H wanted to set her up for success. And I agree with SP3. I think they did a great job. They bring the first off, they make the announcement. She's all over ESPN. She's all over all the big networks. The first big signing of the TKO. I think the TKO deal broke, and then like a week later, they signed Jade Cargill or, or something like that. It was really close together. And they got her on all the major networks. And then they start trotting her out uh, on television, looking like the star that she is, just to give the audience a little introduction, just a little taste of Jade Cargill and get them enticed into who this woman is. And then she got to work in the Performance Center. I know she she dealt with some personal stuff while she was also getting ready to, to uh, perform in WWE. They brought her out at the Royal Rumble. Couple of little more teases. Now I think she's off to the races, and I think she's going to get a WrestleMania match. I think this is clear cut. We're going to get a six woman tag team match. It's just a matter of when they're going to announce it. Dutch, they're kind of running out of time. Okay, when is the six man tag next week or no? I that's, that's that on WrestleMania. Booked. That that's got to get booked for WrestleMania. That's what I it's thought they were announcing. Did I miss uh, it? I mean, they didn't announce anything, but it's clear that they were setting that up. I, I don't know how you don't put that match at WrestleMania. Otherwise, what's the point of bringing Jade in at this point? Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't bring that's what I said that last week. I was like, you don't bring someone in and have them debut two weeks before WrestleMania and have them not have a debut matchup at WrestleMania. I think the whole point of her having her debut now is to set her up for WrestleMania where they don't have to do much. They did the angle tonight. That pretty much is going to make it. They're probably going to announce it on social media, and then they can do one more angle on next week's show. Yeah. Remember, Rick, a year or so ago, where the women's division was in chaos. They had really nobody, and they didn't know what to do with it. Of course, it was under a different regime. I understand that. But now they're packed. They're jammed. And like the, like the men's division, they're jammed and they got angles on top of angles. And, and with the girls, now they got a really, really good all female cast. Uh, and I just hope they can do some really good stories with it because they got the talent now. So let's see what they do with it. But yeah. does, does it, are they going to get a fourth match at WrestleMania? No, is this the third? Is it this feels like, yeah, the third and final match? It, it, it feels that way. Um, I was kind of until a couple of weeks ago, I thought maybe they would do a Jade versus Naya singles match and then do Bianca and Bianca and Naomi challenging for the tag team titles, and that would have been the fourth match, or or Liv Morgan, Liv Morgan versus Nia Jax might be the only other match that could be added. Honestly, if you think about it, they, they, they were off this week. I know they got one show. They got raw. They could do an angle on raw this week and set up that match. That's it. Other, if not, they got nothing going on. They, that, I, I, that's the only other thing that has anything going on right now that they could add to the card that would put a fourth women's match. Cause it, it's clear. They're going to do a six, a six woman tag team match. Are you a little surprised that we're not going to get some kind of a women's tag team title match though? There Dutch or Sid. I, 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 I would, Assume they would have that, but if they hey they're booking it, let's see what they can do with it. I mean, you you can you accept this company? Have you watched this company book the women's tag team titles for the past five <laughs> years? Hey, at least you, they got you, a division you, now. I, at least they got some teams. Do they're, they? they hey, just we put, need to. They just put two singles people together in Naomi and Bianca, and they became the number. They were the number one contenders. They got they got Katana and Kaden. I rarely see them. Uh, they got the whole can uh, bully bully Larray uh, storyline going on. That's the ra the main thing in the women's tag team division over on Raw. Hey, we saw Isla and Alba for about six seconds tonight. Hey, we Roland ask Roland ask a question. It's a good question. I I, I got it. I got it starred. We'll get there. Okay. I, I, 
Does it feel like the biggest one ever? I, I guess we'll do it right now. Okay, Roland Curtis with a super chat saying, <laughs> does 40, WrestleMania 40 feel like the biggest mania to you guys? Dutch. Not really. I mean, I've, I've, there's some others that this doesn't quite pop in my head right now, but it doesn't feel as big as it sounded a couple of uh, a month or so ago. Am I am I alone in that assumption? No, 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 no. I, I would. I I definitely don't think it's the biggest. I think WrestleMania three historically will always be the biggest because of ninety three thousand. Um, even though it, it sucked overall as a show, WrestleMania 32 with 101,000 <laughs> in Dallas, that was a bigger, like you, you, your bigger is a different question than better. I would say that the build to WrestleMania 40 has been one of the best of the past decade. Not I would say much. Would, that's not, not saying much. That's a low bar. It's, it's a very low bar. <laughs> I would say, I would say in the past decade, since like, 30 and this is very this has been very similar to the build to 30 where it, all you're going to remember probably 10 years from now is the big pivot and how they responded to the big pivot and yeah. i would say the pivot this time was executed better than the pivot on 30 even though 30 is remembered for that build of brian da daniel bryan against the authority but i think that the pivot here it feel that feels bigger i will say that feels bigger then 30. Yeah, the 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 rock being involved makes this feel like a a huge pay-per-view. Yeah. I think in the in the way that that Roland is using the word biggest here, this is where I feel CM Punk not being on the card hinders it because I feel like if we had that CM Punk Seth Rollins match, yes. No disrespect to Drew McIntyre because Drew McIntyre is doing the best work of his career. I hope he gets a new contract extension. I hope he wins the world heavyweight championship next weekend because he deserves it. And he's killing it right now. Uh, and I'm every day. I look forward to that. Drew McIntyre, CM Punk feud when it really gets going in that match, when it happens, but not having Seth Rollins and CM Punk on this card, it, it hurts. And that's even with, Rhea and Becky and and Bailey and EO and the fact that we're getting that big tag team match and we're getting but Roman like, and Cody but, too. There's a lot of big matches on there, but CM Punk missing hurts a little bit. But let's let's be real here, guys. I, I'm trying to be honest about WWE. Like, really, all we're gonna remember about the WrestleMania 40 build is The Rock, Cody, and Roman and Seth. The the build to the top two matches, the build sure. to those main event matches. I think Becky and Rhea will probably be remembered after that. Bailey and EO, I've said it last week. I will keep repeating it. They put their foot off the gas and they just started, they just remembered, oh yeah, we should probably heat that up. And they did an angle this week. So thank you for doing an angle. But it kind of I'm kind of I kind of did uh, after the angle, I was like, okay, that was good. And I looked at the clock, I was like, but uh, it's it's good, it's good, but a little too late. Uh, we got a super chat here from enthusiastic rail line steamer saying, I just saw a post it's official Jade, Naomi, Bianca against Oscar Dakota. And, uh, that would be Kyrie Sane. Uh, well, that at, was quick at WrestleMania. They, you know, they're on, they're on the I ball. It. I said, it. they're going to announce it on social media. There you see. go. Trying to find it scrolling through. Uh, this is, this is a great, great show here. I'm going to, I'll try to find it just to, to, not that I don't believe you. But. He's like, yeah, I don't believe you. You need more people. There we go. Yep. SmackDown GM Nick Aldis makes it official. Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, and uh, I, I, uh, Naomi. God, her her Twitter handle says Trinity. And it threw me off. Yeah, yeah Na <laughs> Naomi will battle Asuka, Kyrie Sane, and Dakota Kai at WrestleMania. So there we go. It is official. It is on the show. Thank you, Enthusiastic, uh, for throwing uh, a couple of super chats our way. And uh, making that announce. So we got three women's matches on the card. I was getting worried there for a minute. I was getting so worried you, there for a minute. We only have four women booked on this entire show <laughs> eight days out. <laughs> so you, you you want another match booked? That'd be two a night. I, that would I even think, it up. I think they're close. They're close to getting to there. To that I level think they'll get they it. Do four. Where they can do... I don't think they're going to get it this year, unfortunately. It doesn't you don't? seem... It I will go like, on record as saying I think they're going to get it. What's going to be the fourth match? I don't know. 
that's up to them. But I think they'll just throw it out there. How many, how many females are off? Most of them. There's a lot. There's a lot of females that okay, would be so, on the card with just ten of the women on on the card for. I both mean, faces. Shayna Baszler's not doing anything. Zoe Stark's not doing anything. Hey, so let me really ask you guys something. Do you, have you girl uh, girls have you guys ever heard of a girl wrestler years ago named can't remember her name now Beverly Stevens. Doesn't sound familiar to me. Okay. Yeah. Me if Sid don't know, I don't know. So some, I was, I was doing my other podcast and the, the guy brought it up. He said, you tag team with this female against Rick Rude and somebody. I did not remember her at all. Even when I looked her picture up, I still don't even recognize her. But I had two matches with her in the corner and don't even remember it. Then I heard later, now th this is a good uh, trivia question. I heard three years later, she shot and killed her husband. <laughs> in Texas. Uh, did, did not have, was not expecting to go down that rabbit hole. That, <laughs> that took a sharp left turn at Albuquerque real freaking quick. Was, so I'm the only wrestler who's probably, uh, probably tag team with a, a murderous woman. She actually <laughs> killed her husband. But I've never heard of the I've never heard of the girl. Nobody else has heard of her either. But I just brought that up because how, how much how many how many drugs had you were were you doing back in the day there, Dutch? Maybe you just, you know, no, I wasn't thing. no I'm I was drug free most of the time. You know why? <laughs> I wasn't making enough money to buy drugs. <laughs> they were more expensive than they are today. <laughs> Oh, if it, was, if it was more than a beer, I couldn't afford it. So, uh, and I forgot the the biggest the biggest uh, WrestleMania, of course, is the best WrestleMania, WrestleMania seventeen. That was yeah. the combination yeah. of the seventeen. Era. I was thinking Culmin of seventeen. Combination of the Attitude Era, Austin versus Rock in the, in the main event. You had Taker versus Triple H. You had TLC three. I mean TLC two. So yeah, that would be the biggest. I'm still sitting here this entire time trying to remember something else that was on the WrestleMania 30 card other than Daniel Bryan and Triple H. And then none and of the Rock. other bills were that good. It, I'm it trying was, to remember Rock, what was on the show. I can't. Rock and Taker was their build was not that good. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, was that's on right. The card? That was Brock and Shield, Taker. Shield versus the Attitude Era rejects of Kane and the New Age Outlaws wasn't that good. It wasn't that good, and it build wasn't that good. The first Andre you had, you had Terrence from oh, yes, Florida Cesaro, come yeah. out, come out and announce that. So I was good on that, <laughs> but at least Cesaro won. So happy, happy, joy, joy. What what was the thirty card, Rick? Uh, it was. Wasn't it Undertaker and uh, Brian Lesnar? Versus, Brian versus Triple H, Lesnar versus Taker, Brian Batista, or in the first uh, Andre. Uh, Cena and Wyatt was on that card because uh, I remember they used the Eminem song uh, to build that up. And Shield versus the Attitude Era Rejects. Uh, I think that's six. I think there's only like one more match on the card. I'm oh, the Divas. They had all the Divas. They had like 21 Divas in a matchup that AJ Lee won. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm missing like one more match. This is the one. I'm good. This is all off the top of the dome from ten years was it, ago. Was this from New Orleans? Yes. Uh, there was a. I was there. There was a fatal yes, four-way tag team elimination match for the tag team titles on the pre-show pre with the Usos, the Real Americans, Los Matadors. Damn it! I don't know the last team. I oh think it's the God! Road. The Rhodes. No. Damn it. No. No, you guys, we could go through 800 tag teams and we would never guess Rye Baxel. <laughs> I wouldn't have. I definitely wouldn't have. <laughs> even the dress, even Curtis Axel, even the dressing room boot him. Oh, that's <laughs> just like I should know. I was in the corner of the one of <laughs> I love how the la I love how the only match you forgot was the one your co-host was involved in. 
I knew he was involved then because that was the big angle with Cesaro uh, swinging swagger. Yep. Oh my lord, that was All on. Right. Uh, that wasn't on the paper. That was on the pre-show. The pre-show. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's yep. what that was. And then on. Cesaro won the uh, won the, the and that was right. the that was the start of them pulling him away from you. Is after he won the Andre, right? The next night. Yeah. The next and then, night. oh yeah, I asked him. I said, oh, "What is the reasoning behind?" pulling him away from me and Jack. And they went, well, you know, we got plans for him. The plans lasted like a week. That was it. And then he was, I said, well, damn, he could have done the same thing with us. I mean. They, just, they literally just used him so Heyman could keep reminding people that Lesnar broke the streak. That that's mm. that's literally why he was on TV every week. And so Heyman had time to talk on the mic and remind everybody Brock Lesnar beat the Undertaker's WrestleMania winning streak. John Castro saying, "Damn SP3, you let me, have skills." Let me ask you guys. This something. is this is a man whose memory is unmatched. Like seriously, if I'm doing research and I can't remember something for an article I'm writing, he, I will text SP3 and I'll be like, "Hey, am I misremembering this?" And he'll he, be like, "Yeah, he you're didn't an idiot. know this is what actually he didn't, happened." He didn't know Evelyn and Stevens. <laughs> he, he, he you, didn't you got you got me there, Dutch. Yeah. And don't and don't forget, I'm the first Black Quizzlemania champion. I there you go. Know. Really? I'm sure everybody knows that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But I had I another question. I, I was trying to ask you guys. Trivia. I had to cheat to beat SP3 in trivia. Like it was bad. Like it was bad i had to rig the game uh to beat that man all right let's hop back onto the smackdown card let's uh put a bow on the damage control stuff we did see um an eo sky promo as she uh um explained her motivations saying that uh you know bailey was lost at the time she came back at SummerSlam, uh recruited her and dakota so she could be thrust back into the spotlight herself Said uh, her and Dakota felt obligated to keep Bailey around after she helped Theo win the title, but quickly um, they lost their patience with her. Once considered Bailey a friend, something she will always regret. That's some cold shit to say to somebody. Uh, called Bailey a tragedy and an embarrassment to the company. And then Bailey shows up and kicks her ass afterward, and there's a big pull apart with all the uh, production guys and everything. I. I enjoyed the hell out of this SP3. It was nice for them to kind of like let EO sit there and just kind of retell the story in a really a quick fashion and just lay out all of her motivations for how we got to where we are right now. This is what we needed. We needed this like two weeks ago. Yeah, I honestly, I agree. Because it stopped becoming Bailey versus EO Sky about a month ago. It just became Bailey versus damage control. control. And you lost the you lost the plot of who's actually wrestling the match we're building towards. And now we finally got that by EO telling her side of the story. It's been Dakota talking for EO. It's been Bailey talking for EO. It's been all these other people. Let EO speak in Japanese. You could do the subtitles. It could be a pre-tape. And this was very well done and got across the message. And I like the brawl afterwards. But like I said, I, I feel like this was good, but I don't know if it's good enough for how many weeks it felt like they took the they took the foot off the pedal in this feud. Yeah, it, it it's like they lost focus, Dutch, of EO and Bailey and used Bailey to help build this six woman tag match that, that got set up here. And that's what they've been working on for the last three weeks. Well, like like Sid said, hell, they lost me about three weeks ago. You know, I knew what they were shooting for, and I went, wait a minute, they're, they're going all around instead of zeroing in on it. You know, it's the whole group, and that's completely lost me. But the interview was good, well done, and they have to watch uh, that little Japanese girl. She may be, the crowd may love her because she was she talked rational and well, and we'll see. It'll be, it'll be a great match. Hey, let me ask you guys another question. And I want to see what the people think here too. I finally found that I can put the bulletin board up on my, on my uh -oh. screen here. I've missed it for about two years. <laughs> Better do, you late think, than ever. do you think uh, the undertaker should have lost at what, what was it? 30? Yeah. 30 to Brock. WrestleMania 30. 
to uh, what's his face? <laughs> you think he should have <laughs> broke his streak? No, I don't think Brock Lesnar should have should have be Brock uh, should have beat the Undertaker. That's again that what that's been. My... What do you think, Sid? Um, I have softened my stance from where it was. I I can I can make the argument that it was the right decision. So yeah, he should have. Brock should have won. I mean, I could I, I I mean I could have made the argument until we found out something. So no, I won't make the argument. On second thought, um, no, Brock Sh Brock Lesnar should not have broke the Undertaker's winning streak. Well, even without the newfound information, I still don't think he should have lost. Because I said that, you know, since he was a Vince McMahon, a Vince McMahon invention, I didn't think it would ever be, ever be lost. But what a reaction it did get. Oh, yeah. Hands. Everybody sure. else thought I mean, it would nobody be was expecting either. It. Yeah, everybody was everybody was expecting Lesnar to lose because at least for me at the time when it happened, I felt like this doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you had that you had something that was so iconic and you had the opportunity. And I, this is something I say all the time. You had the opportunity to really make somebody. And I don't think I don't think Brock really needed that. Hell, they wanted Edge. Edge has talked about this before. They wanted they were talking about having Edge beat the Undertaker streak and Edge was like, "No, are you fucking kidding me? I don't need that. I, I don't need that. Why would I do that?" Which is all I always said. I thought it would have made more sense, especially with what they were setting up the following year at 31 with Wyatt coming out and calling himself the new face of fear and really really needing a big WrestleMania win. I thought that would have made sense. Or even Roman Reigns after that, if you wanted to set somebody else up instead of having Reigns be the second guy that beat The Undertaker. But, I mean, again, th there's a lot of things that happened in between. Undertaker wasn't in great shape when he uh, when he wrestled Roman Reigns. So, But I think even Taker talked about that this week, didn't he? Is yeah, that why you're bringing that up? Taker, Taker said this week that he thinks that Wyatt should have beat him for the streak because that could have continued on the Taker character. Yeah, and yeah, he made a he made a compelling argument. I would say that yeah, probably Wyatt would have been the guy. But I mean, I don't know if I would have been more frustrated by the way they booked him because I don't know if him w even winning the streak would have changed how Visek Man was booking him back then. So, and that yeah. Honestly, I always thought the guy should have been Roman because that was the guy they were building. That was the next guy. And him winning the title, it didn't matter how many times he won the title. That didn't do the, the crowning achievement. The thing what? to win to be the crowning achievement would have been the streak. And what year was this? 2014 was when he lost when he lost to Lesnar at WrestleMania 30. And they set it up because when he got taken out in 2013, it was the shield. It was the shield that took him out before he returned for WrestleMania season. So they could have done him versus Roman there and Roman win the streak. If they were going to end the streak, it should have been Roman. I think during that period, creative was so turned around and messed up. They didn't know. They had no long-term plans because you've heard this before, they would rewrite the show sometimes after the talent got there. They'd be running around, what are we, and we'd ask, what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, we don't know. We're writing it now. Rewriting it. I said, damn, it's 5.30. <laughs> <laughs> don't you guys think you need to come up with something? Oh, we'll get it. We'll uh, get 5.30, it. We'll get that, that's early for a rewrite. They, 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 they had rewrites going on at 8.30. Yeah, and during the show, yes, during and the 10 show. At 10.30. Absolutely, absolutely. Shit, they were still rewriting shit after they went off the air. <laughs> uh, that is true. They, <laughs> it was, it was really. You talk about a messed up bunch. They're, they're, they're pulling the rock. Vince is like, all right, let's change this up. We've been off the air for ten minutes, sir. Like this is this is over. Like, what are you? Fuck that. <laughs> okay. Stop that. If you, if you haven't seen that video, by the way, this week of the Rock continuing to whoop cody after raw went off the okay. air this week yeah, so i just i just saw it beautiful. oh it's an all time God. it's an all time segment the, all time off the, the, segment. Just, they could have cut the camera off as soon as the producer's like hey guys we wrapped and he's like fuck that it just stares him down oh no no no, no. notes that was no good. notes look perfect. at your boy look at your boy oh perfect all <laughs> right we open up the show tonight with pretty deadly 
beating RKO uh, after uh, Logan Paul shows up, knocks out KO with the brass knucks. And then Logan Paul's an idiot because instead of just running away at that point, he decides he's going to hide under the ring again for no reason. The deed is already done, but this does allow Randy Orton to see the replay, see him hide underneath the ring. Uh, he he pulls up the curtain. There's the sl- Randy Orton starts chasing this man like Michael Myers is chasing a victim in Halloween. Like he's he is in no damn hurry to to administer the punishment. I'm like, what are we doing right now? And all this was to allow Logan Paul, I guess, to steal a car or was that his own car? I don't know. But he ends up driving off. Uh, and that's our big uh, go home segment here heading into uh, the uh, Kevin Owens show next week and this big triple threat match we have at WrestleMania. What'd you guys think of the opening segment tonight? Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think he got to him too much. You know, he, he laid some big whoppers on him, but he ran away. So the, the point is the point was made. But you got to think about what an idiot. What a really, if you're going to do that, why would you hide right where you came from? But I did like the look on his face <laughs> when Orton pulled it up. Oh, God, he got me now. My got me with my hand in the cookie jar. So, but it, it, it worked, it made its point. So I think wrestling fans are overlooked that and we'll just go with it. Yeah. It, it, I'll say this. There have been worse opening segments in, in the history of SmackDown. Yeah, this was this was fine to continue the story they've been telling with kind of uh, Logan Paul being a thorn in the side of both baby faces. And it's a story that started back in December with Logan Paul and Kevin Owens and it's yeah. progressed and added or into it on our way to WrestleMania for this triple threat match. And I like uh, Logan Paul costing the matchup. It gets pretty deadly, a uh, pretty good win. And yeah, I saw the shades... Of Logan Paul getting mistraining with his reactions and facial expressions during the post match here. Let, let me ask you guys something. Do you think <laughs> with um, SummerSlam being in Cleveland this year that Logan Paul is hanging on to the United States Championship throughout the summer? I, I think Logan Paul's retaining at WrestleMania. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I, I think he's actually one of the heavier betting favorites uh, of anybody on the card this week but i i feel like la night is next for him after la beats aj at wrestlemania that would seem to be logical do they do that at wrestlemania backlash do they do that at money in the bank or i mean i wouldn't be surprised if logan paul still has that strap heading into cleveland i think he and maybe miz and and johnny are going to be maybe heavily featured on that show i don't know i'm just bit, i'm just i'm just wondering out loud here with those go wait you got several how, guys from the cleveland area that they can showcase how highly interested are you in aj and night and la night i mean i think it's going to be a really really good match i mean i i i like i like the build a little bit better than uh than sp3 has i i don't what both these guys can go do you think this is going to be a good match i think it'd be a great match but I'm saying the interest in it. Is I'd what say I'm it's saying. about mid. I'd say it's of the WrestleMania card. It's middle of the pack for me, as far as the <laughs> matches that are there. <laughs> lower, lower middle of the pack for me. The, 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 oh, look, that's a, high, what's the bottom? What's the bottom? What's the bottom? What's the bottom? Let's, oh, let's just find this, out. Let's this, find out what's the bottom here. That's a oh, screaming this, endorsement. This, yeah, like. Match. This tag match they got set up tonight. I have I have very little interest in this tag match. Well, tonight. that well that has a lot more heat to it than than AJ and uh, LA uh, LA Knight. LA Knight and AJ are on a better path than they were two weeks ago after the home invasion. I thought the home invasion helped it out a lot. I thought AJ's promo here. It was fine. I'm not really into this new AJ Styles character. They haven't really executed it well. He just sounds like he's whining a lot about stuff and i understand yeah that can get you heat sometimes but i don't he think has, that's very effective with the I, other I, heel he, that he we has have anger issues yeah. clearly clearly i thought less would have been more tonight i felt like they took a little too long to get to the la night reveal 
Uh, it it just felt like it stretched a, a little too long there. I get under. I I, I would like send it. I, you don't need the. You didn't need the disguise. I don't think you needed the disguise. You send in the decoy. What security pulling them off, and then nobody, LA Knight hits him from behind. Yeah, nobody could tell that was LA Knight standing there, even with the wig and everything else on. Yeah. Really, that was You're the same them. exact disguise that they gave Becky Lynch when she was a fan in the crowd. <laughs> it was a black hat. <laughs> Black glasses and a black shirt. It was the same damn disguise from and a black 2019. Wig. And a, a black, black wig. wig. It was the same disguise from 2019 that they gave Becky Lynch. Just shorter black wig hair. It was the same damn one. Probably the same glasses from the prop room. Hey, I always, uh, let me I always, ask you I always appreciate a good disguise. Even <laughs> if it's the same one. So what match on the first night are you most looking forward to? The one they've been promoting? <sighs> mm. I am looking forward to that one, that tag match. I mean, I am. I think it's going to be a blast. But again, I, I'm a homer. Uh, Becky and Rhea is still top one for me. If that's going to be on night one, which Becky believes it's going to be on night one. That's what she told Ariel Hawani. That's one I've been looking forward to for a long time. So, well, And Becky right now, it could, be, it, could be, it could be Rhea's last, or not Rhea's. It could be Becky's last Mania match for all we know. Her contract's up in two months. So uh, we'll see. She ain't, going going nowhere, there, she ain't going nowhere. She ain't going nowhere. Yeah, like let's, let's stop. It. Are you kidding me? Don't don't play with these people. Yeah. Stranger things have it. happened, guys. Stranger yeah, things. Yeah. Okay. Happened. All right. All right. So we got our our six pack ladder match that has been officially set. Uh, Theory and Waller getting in over the Street Profits. SP3, you thought the Street Profits were going to get in last week? I think that was. I think that was just like. Uh, Dutch, I think it was like me being wishful thinking that this whole Street Profits and Bobby Lashley versus Final Testament was over. Um, I, I, I've, I've, I've moved on. I think, I think, I my spirit, I to. my heart, and my mind has moved on from this storyline like two months ago. I cannot believe this thing is still going on. <laughs> it's still going on, folks. How long? This thing started in like November. What? <laughs> No one. one cares. No one no. cares. No Nobody one cares, cares about the final <clears throat> testament. I got big news for you. They only care about Bobby Lashley in this story because y'all changed the Street Profits music, which makes them less over than they were months ago. They gave them heel had... music and they turned a baby face again. Like I, I, I you know, I would, you know what I remember yeah. the other day. I know earlier on the show, Rick, I remember that the the artists that we have been identifying as the street as street business were heels like six months ago. They were feuding with LWO. It was during the LWO Legato Del Fantasma segment. I was like, wait, when was the last time I saw all these LWO members together? Oh yeah, it was when they were feuding with the street business. When was the street? <laughs> I was like, I was like, when was the street? They business? turned them heels. And then everybody kept cheering for him, and they're like, "Well, fuck it, let's just make baby faces again." And then they just kept all their heel shit. <laughs> That's exactly what they did. People didn't boom. They went, "Wait a minute!" And then they don't win matches. You are they you people stupid or what? Work with us. They're telling the people, "Work with us. Come on, help us out here a little bit." I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here watching this match tonight. This tag team match, which was which was fine. It was a SmackDown tag team match. Yeah. But I'm sitting here and I'm watching Montez Ford with just effortless athleticism and charisma, and I'm going, "It has been five <laughs> years now of me going. When are they gonna do something with this man? They have just they have got this guy on." sitting on a rack like he's a fine wine like they just like they'll pop it open for a special occasion sooner rather than later but i don't know when the hell that's going to be it's well when they sit there the and sit there, and sit in there. A row, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing the week before the show i don't think they're gonna have to do something with those guys or change bust one of them up or do something but those guys are hitting on zero right now of course, being in there with who? Who were they in there with? What's the name of that group? With Ellery, A Town Down Under was who they oh, lost. Oh God, <laughs> that would that take the heat away from a damn on fire oil well. I, I had a feel. I I had a <laughs> feeling that uh, Theory and Waller were going to get in just because of the work that they've been doing 
just great. Any any pay per view spot they could find a way to get Grayson Waller on, they've been throwing him on there. It's been a lot of talk segments, but look, don't be don't hey, be surprised. I, I, don't be surprised if Theory and Waller win this bitch. I'm, I'm one. Uh, no, nah, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, but I would go as far as to say I want to give Grace, uh, Grayson Waller a lot of credit. He's been working on his body. I noticed that before yep. the match started that he's been working out with Austin Theory. You could yeah, tell he has. he's been working out with Austin Theory and going to the tanning booth with Austin Theory because his tan was on the level of Austin Theory here. So I got to give Grayson Waller credit. He's working on different stuff. So after... Um... Karen Cross gets shown on the screen. He's beating up Bobby Lashley. That leads to the distraction that uh, the Street Profits lose the match. Then Again. we get the beat down with the final <laughs> testament afterwards. And Karrion Cross, like after Bobby Lashley comes down hobbled and he beats up Bobby Lashley again, he's like, You get it now, Bobby. Now nobody's going to WrestleMania. And I'm like, for real? Like, are we is this what we're doing? Like <laughs> None of y'all are going to like this match is getting Damn booked, it. right? Like Testament versus the, the Pride, whatever the hell you want to call it. This match is getting booked, right? Like this is going on the WrestleMania card, right? They didn't announce it for next Friday. What the hell have we been doing since, as SP3 said, November, if this match ain't on the Mania card? What are we doing? Oh, my God. When I see those guys on the TV, I just go, that's the break time. Oh, I'll take a little nap, 10 minute nap. So it, it's gone when I come back. I don't want to knock it, but I just did knock it. I mean, they can't, they creative, you have to learn, they can't do it with everybody. That's why I think. If the, when they concentrated on the rock and concentrated on some of their stuff, they did better. But this was a maintenance show. We can't expect it to be much better than this. They come off that good show, raw, and then they come back to this. So, yeah, what was raw Raw's rating been, raw last has week? Been consistently better than SmackDown over the last few weeks, and it's it's not even close. Already announced for next Friday is the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal: Zelina Vega versus Electra Lopez. New Catch Republic versus uh, A Town Down Under, Jay Uso versus Solo Sokoa, and the Kevin Owens show. That might honestly be the entire dang card. So if they're not booking Final Testament versus Street Business next Friday, it's got to be on. It's got to be one of those mid mid matches on Saturday or Sunday. And, and why why doesn't WWE just announce this matchup? And it would do a favor to a lot of different people. You know, Rick's trying to be nice, <laughs> but me and Dutch are going to be honest. AJ Styles and LA Knight is a cold feud going into WrestleMania, but it doesn't need to be the coldest feud going into WrestleMania. Yeah. So why not throw Final Testament and the Street Profits and Bobby Bobby Lashley on this car? Jimmy and Jay Uso, I've established on multiple platforms. They did not do this whole rivalry correctly at all. It feels very cold in comparison to what it could have been. Yeah. So why not throw Street Business versus Final Testament on there to help them out too? Let me ask you something. I must have missed this tonight. What were what was the interview with Solo? What were they talking about? It literally what I was like, yo, these dudes, they actually showed them showing up at the building just to sit in the in their locker room yeah. for like a minute promo. Oh my god. <laughs> Paul Heyman basically said that the rock attacked Cody Rhodes on Monday Night Raw by orders of the tribal chief. And because the Ro because we need to reinforce here that Roman Reigns is the big dog here. Yes, he's the big dog. He's the tribal chief. And then Jimmy said, by orders of the tribal chief, Jey Uso will not be making it to WrestleMania. And by orders of the tribal chief, he's got to deal with the tribal heir, Solo Sokoa. And Solo Sokoa says, Jay, I'm going to miss you, but I got to take you out by orders of the tribal chief basically the point of the whole promo by orders of the tribal chief which means next friday on smackdown jay uso is going to beat the man who practically murdered john cena and then wwe did nothing <laughs> or he will he will win by disqualification because yeah he probably interferes
probably. Probably. Um, well, as you can tell, folks, we're all in just uh, disbelief on what we saw. and We can't explain it. So if we can't explain it. You're on your own, pal. Here's something I can't explain. This is the biggest <laughs> head scratcher of the entire night for me, of the entire night. Legato del Fantasma comes down. They cut their promo. Santos thanks Dominic Mysterio. He he welcomes you know Dominic down, and everybody's booing Dom, and they're doing this whole thing. Bray comes down, and they have this this great shot that looked like something out of Captain America: Civil War, right? Where it's like you got Legato del Fantasma on one side, you got the LWO. It's five on five, five or four guys and a girl, four guys and a girl, and each one. And I'm like, oh hell yes. We about to make this 10 person mixed tag match official. Let's Latino go. Latino Civil War. All out gang war at WrestleMania. Let's freaking go. And then Rey Mysterio with all of his boys and his girl next to him says, I want to challenge you and my son to a two on two tag match with me and my special partner. And it ain't nobody who's standing in the ring right now. What? <laughs> <laughs> they literally what? they literally set up Rey Mysterio and a partner versus people that that have betrayed Rey Mysterio and they did the angle to set up that matchup by teasing the next person that is going to turn on Kurt, on Rey Mysterio because this was all about them announcing that Dragon Lee was the newest member, and then the camera kept going to Carlito. They did not do that oh, yeah. subtle at all. No. They just kept going to Carlito no. to hear his reaction of, oh, that's interesting. I'm watching it. I don't know what the elf they're talking about. I went, I don't get it. I, well, I didn't get it. I, NXT, even when you explain it, I don't get it. There were some NXT references in there, uh, by the way. Like, they thought, like, when, when Santos is talking about, oh, you were right, Dom. You were always right. That's some deep cut, like, two years ago NXT stuff that people like SP3, myself, and Triple H remember. But, <laughs> no, but ain't nobody else going to remember that. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I thought we were building to LWO versus Legato, and now it's just like, yeah, here's Ray and Dominic, too, but, yeah, we're also going to book Dragon Lee and Santos Escobar on this card. That's it. I, I really thought their Ray's partner was going to be Andrade. I was like, Andrade. That would have been, been cool. Like, Andrade, I got nothing against Dragon Lee, but. Yeah, I got nothing against Dragon Lee, but I was just like, Andrade, you just got here. Like, I thought they were going to get you a WrestleMania spot at least. <laughs> and you, I, you, man, you, I'm sorry. You, 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 you left, you left some money on the, probably on the table from AEW the way they've been, way WWE been treating free agents. You probably took a pay cut to come back to WWE. They couldn't even get you on the WrestleMania card. I mean, I felt bad for Dragon Lee tonight. He got like no pop, like no pop from the crowd. Be because they pushed him for like three weeks and, and then stopped. And then pushed him to NXT. They put him back down in NXT. Mm-hmm. But then, but then his his push in NXT ended like February, so they haven't done anything with him. Roland Curtis saying, "I thought Ray's partner would be Bad Bunny. That would at least that got a reaction. Much that yeah. would have been much better." Oh, Lord. Okay, I read a statement this week, and I want your opinion on it. Yep, Sting's last match, mm -hmm. and they're talking about a new last match. Okay, just forget he had the last one. His last match should be Undertaker's last match. No. No, it's too late. And the guy, he, he was a fan. He asked everybody, and, well, they, they blew him out of that discussion. Everybody said no. They don't want to see oh, that. Oh, everybody said no. We don't want to see that. Uh, let me ask you a question. That. Is it 1998? If it was 1998, I would say hell yeah, sign me up right now. Mm -hmm. No, I if, if I would my my question in response would be, do you have a flux capacitor <laughs> or a DeLorean of sorts? If yeah. not, then hell no. I do not yeah. want to see 65 year old Sting after the greatest final match in my opinion I've ever seen 
uh, at, at Revolution, and Undertaker, who was like Brett Favre, ruining his career every time he came back, and then finally got a good close off with the Boneyard matchup. Yeah. I don't want to see him risk that and come back again. Ric Flair showed us what happens when you try to come back one too many times. Yeah, I mean, if you could go back in time, and even like just. Just slap some sense into Vince McMahon, who was the only person on the planet who didn't want to see Sting versus Undertaker, which is why that damn match didn't get booked from 10 years ago. Okay, yeah, then let's go. I'd, I'd say fine, sign it up because, you know, hey, we we at least it at least would have been a spectacle. We at least would have got him in the damn ring at the same time, one-on-one -on -one with a bell ringing, uh, even if they both weren't and in their we, prime. And, but. We, and we wouldn't have got a match where Sting uh, teams up with his sworn enemies of the NWO because it's WCW versus WWF in 2015. <laughs> You had uh, and you had X Pac out there who was literally on both teams. <laughs> All right, I think we kind of just about covered it. SP3, what you got going on in True Hill Heat this week? Uh, check out the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. We go live 11:05 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. We'll be discussing the latest wrestling news, including the Big Rock and Cody Angle. Has the Rock brought back the WWE Attitude Era? That's what everybody's been saying. We'll talk about it tomorrow, 11:05 a.m. Eastern Time. Myself, Miss Chrissy Love, True Jaw Josh, True Hill Heat Flagship Podcast. Dutch, what you got going on? Not a lot. I have really rested up this week. I've been sleeping like a son of a gun. Quit bragging. So, <laughs> so you've actually been working, right? Oh, God. And you've been working too, right, Sid? Yes, sir. Well, I haven't been working. I've, I've been like... But anyway, uh, if you want to talk... <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Oh, Dutch, I, uh, before you give your plugs, I wanted to ask you, because this week on Dark Side of the Ring, it was about Brutus the Barber Beefcake. What's yep. your thoughts on Brutus the Barber Beefcake and his career? What's the question? What's your thoughts on Brutus the Barber Beefcake and his career? I wasn't around him that much. And that's it. That's all I can say. Oh my god, just the mm. <laughs> he was there. Is all that, I was can say. Great, that was a great reaction. Go ahead, Dutch. That was perfect. <laughs> anyway, if anybody wants to get hold of me, which is probably nobody does, uh dirty Dutch Mantel with two L's at gmail.com and I'll get back to you. Oh, Goodness. Uh, you can follow me on uh, X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. Instagram as well. Uh, at Rick Uchino, as it's spelled down there. Uh, right now, my pin post up on Brutus. Twitter is my uh, yeah. okay. See is my very long, very candid conversation with one Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Uh, make sure to check that out. She 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 has well, she didn't hold back, did she? No, nope. she sure did not. And my by the bro. way. I left some on the cutting room floor. Uh, <laughs> just throwing that out there. Uh, so make sure to check that out up uh, on cagesideseats.com. Again, it's my Did you post. learn but anything out... you didn't? Did you learn anything you didn't know before? Uh, when Stephanie McMahon Such... slapped the shit out of her at Elimination Chamber, it gave her concussion. Crazy. Steph... Now, see, I didn't know worker. that. Stephanie McMahon, uh, dangerous worker. It won Stephanie. It was... It was... Yeah. Who slapped who now? Who slapped who? Stephanie slapped Rhonda at a point in Rhonda's life where if she got wrapped on the noggin at all, she was seeing stars because she had that that many concussions going all the way back to her days in judo when she was like a preteen. That's like the wow. big revelation of this book that that she had coming out. That's why you know part part of the reason why she she lost to. Holly Holm uh, in 2015 is because she walked into that match with a concussion and an ACL injury. And this is some stuff that, uh, you know, she she threw out there now that she can talk about it because she had to hide her concussion stuff from from WWE. Otherwise, they they weren't going to put her in these matches. She hasn't been able to talk about it until now where she's like, I'm done. I'm 30. Whatever. I'm I got a kid. I got a ranch. I'm retired. Like, I don't give a fuck. 
here's all my secrets. Here's everything I've been holding back for the last decade. She ain't holding back no more. That's uh, that's for sure. You can check out that conversation uh, again on my uh, on my pinned uh, post there on Twitter. You can also check out uh, if you want my book review of uh, Becky Lynch's book, and I'll be talking to Montez Ford next week about that WrestleMania match he doesn't have right now. Uh, so that's all you got coming out. Just follow me up there on uh, on Twitter, and uh, that's where all my stuff comes out. We won't be back next week. We will not be live next Friday. I believe SP3 is committed elsewhere. I'll be in Philadelphia. And Dutch don't know how to run stuff by himself. So we're, we're, we're no, I do not. And I'm not going to learn either. We are making the executive decision to be off next week. We will do a mania post uh, pre post show review at some point, which will come out here on the sports Kita wrestling Facebook page and sports Kita wrestling or sports Kita or wrestle binge by sports Kita YouTube channel. It's late. I'm going to bed. See y'all have a great week.